Hello. I'm not here. Oh. Welcome, oh, man. Mia Blixian of Lemon Knife. Hey, I'm Knife. here now. And John Ritter and Moore of Lemon Knife. And we're here to tell you more songs and things. And that buildings are our favorites. and food? This is 30 through 21, starting with Mia. Hey, me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like a speaking spell now? What is this? What? <laughs> I don't even know, you know what like that it's, is. It's like one of those children's toys where you like, you know, you, you have to type something in and it goes like a cat. C-A-T. Cat or something. Okay. You're a speaking spell now. Okay, so you're a speaking spell now. We're gonna, and uh, there's a lot of things you've done as a speaking spell. A-L-L-T-H-E-S-E-T-H-I-N-G-S-T-H-A-T-I apostrophe V-E D-O-N-E. Finish it. T A G K I L L E R S F U C K Y O U. You are not child appropriate. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. This is my favorite killer song. It's off Hot Fuss, which is a fantastic album. Um, this is just, I know it's like melodramatic and corny as heck, and that is exactly why I love it so much. Yeah, it's fantastic. It is, and it's just like, you know, you got that corny but fantastic bridge where you got the soul but you haven't got the soldiers you know and um you got a choir singing you got a choir singing it too and it's like the time and the truth and the heart and it's like yes this is the full camp oh no it's not the full camp there's way campier killer songs but it's like painfully campy at that point i don't know there isn't such a thing as too much camp it's rare but um, at some point, you got to get back to civilization and showers and that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, you have to pack up the tent yep. and, you know. But, yeah, great uh, great overall, great vocals, great great instrumentals, great, like, guitar melodies. Yeah, great momentum to it. There's, like, continuous build, but still, obviously, parts. Time, like. truth, parts. My number 30 is Get the Kingdom <laughs> by Crazy Arm. Yes, another Crazy Arm. More Crazy Arm. Uh, this one is kind of, it's got great, like, choir intro, and then it's kind of just a great, like, rocking song, like, building up in these bridges and bridges. choruses and things, Chorus, going back things. to the acapella vocal part. I don't know, it's just like this great, like, structured song, and I just like it a lot well i do have to correct you john you've got crazy arms i've just got one crazy arm as appropriate so oh that's true (laughs) number 29 i'm sorry john that's their only good song it's fine (laughs) i'm sorry for the next one too then here's comfortably numb by pink floyd this is Peak Gilmore. This was peak David Gilmore. This is absolutely his best solo ever. You know, that entire end of the song is just, where are you going? I'm receding. Are there any pain? No. Oh, good. That's great. Ow. Ow! <laughs> no, but I mean, that, 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 that like, chorus, too. That, that, speaking of the chorus, it is just like a ridiculously sing-along chorus. And it's, like, a really well-done, like, vocal choice where Roger Waters is the doctor and David Gilmore is pink. And uh, they're kind of having the conversation back and forth. So, yeah, uh, you have, like, that more manic doctor, and then you have, like, the receding receding pink. I didn't even realize there are two different people in it. Oh, but ba- yeah, basically, and whenever you hear mania, it's Roger Waters. Whenever you hear something overly calm, it's David Gilmore, pretty much. So why is... Wait, why is the... Shouldn't the doctor be the one saying you are receding? Well, Pink, pink is like overdosing on heroin. Yeah. Obviously, the doctor's... Well, been, everything's been receding. Guess, okay, fair enough. And he's like, hey, I had a fever and this Okay, is, yeah, the it fever would like, be him. Yeah. He's like, you know, near death. The doctor has to come in and get him so that he can... Because he's totally in shape for another show is the whole point. Like, he's having a hard time, but they're driving him on this tour. It's pretty it's much kind of making that heroin time. sound good. <laughs> Kids, don't do heroin <laughs> or <right>. drugs. <laughs> My number 29. Um, we'll go up from some or drugs to some hard. nice, wholesome violence. Oh, uh, yeah. This is Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner by Warren Zevon. Oh, yeah, uh, wholesome violence. Yes. I don't know if it's whole. He's not got a head. I'll just spell it without a W. It's a great uh, piano-driven like saga mm-hmm. of... Somehow it's like a song about a guy, a mercenary whose head gets 
the shot off and then he comes back to life to take revenge and somehow it makes it sound like a serious like piano ballad just like it's like a super serious. Not, it's not like taking, it, but it's but like. I know what you it's mean. not like, whoa, here's a wacky head. Okay. Scenario. Yeah. Like those. But it's like, like still like lively got, enough. Yeah. Things. Like, yeah. no, it's still like energetic, but it's like, it's taking itself like seriously, but in like a good way. Like, like those harmonies on the like, ah, nah, nah, oh, yeah. For war. Uh, watch uh, him. His like last ever public live performance mm-hmm. is uh, him performing it on the David Letterman show. That was a favorite of his, fantastic. right? Fantastic. Yeah, it was uh, Letterman's favorite, so he oh, yeah. performed that. Uh, I do have to point out that when you were doing the happy version, you were coming out very Pixies. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, stop, Milner. <laughs> they would do an interesting cover of that. They've done ain't that pretty yeah, at all. Yeah, they did right? ain't that pretty at all. Very natural fit. Very good Pixie song, pretty much. Uh. All right, we're going to follow with the other Pink Floyd song on my list. And this is technically two different songs, but for me, you can't have one without the other. It's Brain Damage slash Eclipse. This one's fine, yeah. But, thank you. Um, <laughs> that's great. I um, you know, was just waiting the, for my approval, I'm sure. This is the closer <laughs> of their, you know, best-known album, Dark Side of the Moon. And rightfully best-known. It's like, you know, the one with just a kind of this consistent run of hits mm-hmm. and, and good sounds. And um, you've got <clears throat> this just chord. It's... Like soothing and unnerving at the same time, this kind of guitar sound, you know, like just the guitar alone. I mean, it's like soothing and unnerving. But then you bring in Roger Waters, of course, and he's the lunatic, and someone's laughing in the background. And is yeah. it Sid Barrett? I don't think so. I think it's just some ran. I, I think when they were recording the album, they were just getting some random dudes to do interviews, uh, okay. and so that must have been an interview. We and at the end of the clips, you can actually hear the un- the in- the infamous. Uh, there is no dark side of the moon. Really, matter of fact, it's all dark. That was an interview. Hmm. Um, and yeah, speaking of Eclipse, what a way to close out an album. It's just kind of this continuous bill and very repetitive and simple, but like really well done to, to close out, you know, in the in the Pink Floyd style. So uh, good stuff. All right, my number 28 we don't need to talk about because it is There is a Light That Never Goes Out and we just covered it last video. I'm not, yeah. Number 27. Uh, oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> I have these, po- these post this stuff together. Uh, I swear I'm not just doing this because of a recent death. I, I, I did kind of remember recently how great of a song this was. Just what I need by the cars, by the way. Um, this might be like the most, the catchiest synthesizer melody on record. You know, and you go to the, and it's just kind of like this fantastic new wave. It's like, yeah, let me go buy some new uh, phone charging cables. That is absolutely not. <laughs> I know. Look, I had the same Circuit co- City commercials you did, and I could see through them, okay? <laughs> it's, a, it's a great song. I mean, the Cars are just as a great, distinctive band. Yeah, that, that debut album is so good. And it's like just straight through, yeah. All right, my number 26 is one from earlier in Mia's. This Ooh, is much uh, earlier, huh? Spachemin by The Killers. Spachemin? Uh, yep. Uh, just great, uh, uh, my favorite song of theirs, great, like, emotional, Oh, your favorite uh, song of theirs, yeah, yeah. Okay. fair enough. Yeah, top one on here, uh, just fantastic energy and, like, great emotion to it. Yeah, it's, like, energetic and emotional at the same time. Yeah. It's really well, yeah. Number 26. Is a deeper cut by the U. The U. The U. Who? Who are you? Ooh, 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 ooh. Music must change. So this is actually off their final album with Moon, um, which kind of makes its own significance. It actually doesn't have any drums at all on it, uh-huh. which is you know, just some symbols, and you know it's kind of a sad statement of where he was at the time because you know drumming on the album is definitely not where it used to be. But barring who that, are you still has great drums. Oh yeah, Who Are You still has great drums, but I think, like, compared to what he was, like, you know, early on, the mania's died down, that's the best drum song on the album, for sure. Uh, But anyway, barring all of that, you know, the personal statements, and not to mention, he's in a a chair on the album cover saying not to be taken away, which everyone was just like, oh, oh, good. (laughs) He's he's just been taken away. Um, Yeah, I mean, think about it. Think about this for a second. Okay, uh, the second's passed anyway. Anyway, the, the, the point is, this, to me, barring everything else, and the instrumentals are great, too, 
um, is Roger Daltrey's finest vocal performance. Um, and Love Great Army is a great vocal song as well. We'll see it soon. But, uh, you know, when you combine it with everything else, that's what makes it, makes it a fantastic song. This one is just completely carried by, uh, by Mr. Daltrey, I think. And, uh, you know, the we were talking... The Big Raj. The Big Raj. We were talking in another video about um, how it was kind of t difficult for you to distinguish between Roger and Pete. Now, this is a, this I, is a song that's really going to confuse... I think the bottom line is really more that <laughs> I can never distinguish between any vocalists on any song. I didn't even know there were, like, different Beatles singing for a long time. I, I didn't either. I mean, I, I learned about Ringo and George before I learned about John and Paul. For a while, that was... But, like, here it would even confuse you more because in one bit where it's still Roger, but he dies it down so much, they may as well be Pete. So it's like mm. kind of a fantastic display of his full vocal ability, you know, he was definitely at his peak in the 70s. So. Is the bridge of You Better You Bet, Pete? You mean I lay on the bed with you? Yeah. Make some? No, that's Roger, actually. Oh, okay. So, uh, you gotta get even wimpier to be Pete. Okay. No offense to Pete! <laughs> 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 alright, alright. Alright, we're gonna go Let from a, a deep cut of the ooh to a very obvious cut. Oh, no, I moved that higher. Uh, alright. Oh, oh, so, oh, number okay. 26, <laughs> or is it 20? Alright, 26 is actually going to be Progress by Midnight Oil. <laughs> Uh, Wait, where was that originally, or was it always 26? This is all, I guess now we're back to norm, normal. Oh, okay, got uh, it, got So it, got yeah, it, got 26, it, okay. Progress by Midnight Oil. Uh, and I was kind of, this one is, it's got basically two great things, just great, uh, great, like, dark rockin', like, oh, riff, yeah. like, <laughs> and then just amazing, like, Lyric writing and delivery by uh by Peter Petey Garrett. Uh, Petey Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's like shorter than me, by the way. You wouldn't think it from his really. Little... Yeah, he's like five foot two. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, so many short singers. I mean, we're just talking about Roger Daltrey. He's like five foot six. Well, it makes sense. You know, they're short, so you gotta like kind of step up. Like, and, like vocal yeah, he's like bah, get you know, people's yeah. attention. But That's anyway, go on. I'm sorry. Just uh, like kind of great gem rule. The. Uh, General Maurice. Oh, <laughs> the no. different song that I'm not on this list. list. It's not on this list. No. Go listen to their oh. real best song the, no. when the generals talk. <laughs> but no, in reality, it's number four under uh, Razzleberry Dressing, yep. back on Broadway. Uh, <laughs> and Spirit in the and Sky. Spirit in the Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, John. Uh, what else were we going to say? You also have his great. If you wanted the ultimate in like Australian delivery, it was his rhyme of eyes on the hat, eyes on the stratosphere, it's so much junk. Yeah. What eyes about on the firmament, eyes permanent. on the firmament, <laughs> hands on the armament, words full of arguments, words for our monuments. I didn't, yeah. Something like that. All right, what's Close your enough. next one? Close than I would have gotten. Uh, it's interesting. I think we're kind of seeing a trend where, like, I'm getting more epic and you're getting less epic as we go towards the top, aren't we? Well, we'll oh, see. I think we'll see more epics we'll see. at the fair very enough, top fair of mine. Maybe we'll just go both go full epic and... Uh, here's Made in Heaven by Queen. Not the end Queen song by any means, but probably Freddie's finest vocal. And so it was originally a Freddie solo song. And what they did... I prefer the uh, Queen version where they kind of remastered it all. Mm -hmm. But um, what they did was they took the vocals, and this was posthumous, they took the vocals from that and they put it over a very, you know, Queen instrumental because he was trying mm -hmm. to work on that, you know, before he, before he passed. So um, they, they kind of constructed, a, you know, a Queen song out of it rather than, you know, super campy pop Freddy, <laughs> which, oh, like, yeah. you know, it, which is fantastic, but super campy pop and certainly not anywhere <laughs> on this list. Guys, I want you to listen. I want you to go look up "Living on My Own" by Freddie Mercury if you haven't already. If you want just like painful, pampy pop about being lonely, uh, that's uh, that's where you go. But anyway, you know. Is it written to like be about death? Uh, not quite. It's more written about prophecy, which in itself oh, okay. makes you know, like you know, it's made in heaven. It's written in the stars. It's it's kind of takes some Zoroastrian themes, which you know, Freddie was Zoroastrian, and so just everything about this is just kind of like. I think it's just like beautifully done where he's, you know, both strong and restrained and just it's a very vulnerable performance of his. So my favorite of his. All right. My 25 is Me and Mia. Oh. Uh, by Ted Leo and the Pharmacist. Are you calling me an eating disorder? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, the, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. The, the Mia being a uh, bulimia there. Yeah. Uh, and an anorexia. Yeah. Yeah. It took me a while um, to figure that out, believe it or not. Yeah, I, th I think I would figure out from seeing something on, like, Song Me. Oh, it's kind mm -hmm. of already hinting that it's about... I mean, it's certainly about yeah. something, yeah. But yeah, just, like, fantastic, like, 
another kind of punk epic like mm -hmm. it's just the chorus is this great other like kind of almost like like re mini reggae-ish thing i yeah. guess uh, <laughs> and it's just so many like builds and lowers intensity and just like some of ted leo's like fiercest vocals Fierce delivery, yeah. fiercest Very passionate. like lyrics especially when it gets to the end it's just like stop forget what i love Ted Leo, what a dude. Yeah. Go see him live. Awesome dude. Fantastic. Awesome dude. live shows. Do it. Do it as soon as you can. Great band. Or else. Anyway, moving on with the uh, increasingly epic, terrifying list with Mia. We have another fade in intro. We have, but not nearly as effective as an alarm clock. Because just, you know, guitar coming in. It's, um. No, no, no. We don't even get there at first. It's like, bing. Terrible alarm clock. Anyway, here's where the streets have no name by U2. This is the first time U2 have shown up, but they have so it's weird. They have a lot of songs that are like great, but like just below. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't think they have any on my list. F fair Unless enough. They already I mean, had one. I don't think, I don't they, think did. they did. No, but um, this one is just like now. There's a driving epic. Yeah. Now, like it, it's kind of like this interesting structure where it's like you know a minute or so of build up guitar straight through delivery and then like a minute or so of cool down guitar it's like a workout it's like a workout in five minutes yeah. um and then you know when you get into it you know you've got these fantastic drums that you were just doing you've got you know the bass coming in obviously the edge is driving a lot of it and bono being his fantastic vocal self and um you know fantastic stuff hinting at you know the things that were going on in ireland at the time you know joshua tree as a whole i think was so um great opener of the album so yeah all right, now we get to the the one I was, I was going to transition so smoothly into earlier. I'm sorry. Uh, for, no, it's because oh, okay. I'm changing the number. <laughs> oh, right, of yeah, it. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so from the mo from the deep who cut to the most obvious who cut, this will be won't oh, get yeah. fooled again. Uh, You'll see this again 24. later. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> no, no, I will. Don't, don't, yeah. don't blame yourself. <laughs> uh, it's just kind of all time like, you know, super epic. Who mm -hmm. crunchy guitar, legendary All drum the piece, solo, yeah. <laughs> the legendary that scream. Synth, yeah, the screams, it made just great just vocals. Just all the parts of legendary, but, just yeah. yeah, just legendary, except maybe the bass. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> and I'm just saying it doesn't have like the bass solos of their other songs. Well, okay, well, well if, if you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, you just don't know it's there is the problem. You probably think it's a guitar, you, you peasant. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's also not good. It is hidden, it is hidden way back. You're right. I'm sorry. No, I shouldn't. It's put it back in the mix. So what you're saying is they actually just let, like, a screeching hyena in the studio. And you're like, ah! Hyena! <laughs> not on your list, I hope. No. <laughs> it's a good song. No, oh, I hate that song. Okay. Uh, not as much as I hate King of Comedy. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a good song also. Oh, uh, stop! But we do want to give an honorable mention to R.E.M. as a whole. We, they didn't yeah, actually didn't, make it I on either think, of ours, yeah. but they have so many great like songs. They're such a great band that... They're probably like 10 to 20 that would make it onto like a top like a 200, 300 I think, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like even for me, like probably 200, but it'd be pretty yeah. close. Anyway, here's my one Beatles song, actually. I Nowhere none, Man. And that would be my one. <laughs> right, I know. And I was just kind of thinking about it. I mean, we had a solo, I, one or two solo Beatles songs earlier. I think there were Paul's. And it's interesting because I think this one is John Lennon driven. And I, I, and I think, you know, I didn't like a solo career at all. And I'd say Paul's my favorite no. Beatle by a mile. But um, this is just a great song by all. Great harmony vocals. Yeah, great guitar great, sound. Great guitar bow, sound. Bow. And catchy melody and just like the tone. It's a great tone. It's like hypnotic. It is. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, everything that... It's Off Rubber Soul, right? And I think... Yeah, it's Off Rubber Soul, which is my favorite Beatles album. And it's, it's like that dead in-between, like, super peppy 1964 and uh, Let It Be, which is a terrible thing that anyone... Um, so, you know, it's just like right in the middle where they're starting to push the boundaries and yet, you know, still keeping the pop sensibilities. Yeah. All right, my number 22 is... Or 23. Uh, I did 23, and I went first. You're 23. Okay, why do I only have... Oh, because... All right. All right, oh, my good. number 23 is uh, the highest-ranked uh, rap or hip-hop song on my list, mm -hmm. and this is uh, Rich Man's World by oh, Mortal boy. Technique. Uh, <laughs> I love this song, but... but, but 
It is very, it's very, it's very beat. over the top. It's a scary beat. It's like Tom and Jerry on steroids. <laughs> it's basically Go just on. a like manic, over the top, constant like excoriation of uh, rich people. Which is and great. All be. Everything yeah. we love about our immortal technique. Yeah, it's just immortal technique at some of his finest. It because it's both, you know, like some of the things are like. It's clear that like he's both like he he throws in like crude funny things mm -hmm. and he's also but throwing in kind point. of like deeper analysis or like deeper points. Uh, End of the conversation. Yep. Go on. You know he's ranging from you know, talking about. Mm, fancy what <laughs> censored? Yeah, mention, this but, is, like from that to like the World Bank or like it. that type of thing. Yeah, like Paying people to just leave a and fantastic. Kind of... uh, I, now I'm trying to picture a censored version of this. Would there even be anything left? I don't pay him to leave. Pay him to leave. That's probably the closest we'd get to a complete line. <laughs> yep. There are just some like straight words that would just be. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> new money minus brand new carrots. Mailed money by your great grandparents. Okay. All right. There you Plus go. Plus, I own a building for each one of my children's children. Okay, that's three. Yeah. There we go. All right. That's probably it. <laughs> Number twenty-two. Anyway. Kathar's off, John. Do, do, do. Oh, no, 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 no. You gotta do oh. your thing with, with David Byrne. I eat a cookie. Oh, no. <laughs> what, what thing do you want? I'm just, just the system you may find yourself. I wanted you to start. Okay. okay. Well, all right, we're gonna stop that. Uh, <laughs> not the cookie. No, we did make up. We did write a great talking head song at one time. We were walking through a park and we were like, I eat a cookie. <laughs> it's not about cookies and being in a timeout corner. <laughs> Time out. Corner. Look that on a bonus track one day. What's a lifetime by the time? And when you read a cookie, you'll find yourself time. Look for that on our next uh, EP. Um, anyway, once in a lifetime, is is it possible not to love this song to at least a certain extent? Impossible. It can't be. I mean, it's uh, infectious. It's making a point, but in a goofy manner. It's like, you know, anti-materialism, but but not entirely. You can't quite catch on to it. It's also kind of a meme, you know? Yeah. And then you got the music video, the ever-infamous music video, where it's, you know, just these extremely white people trying to, you know, <laughs> do things. I don't... Anyway, fantastic 80s work and fantastic talking heads. I love the build-up towards the end where the organ starts yeah, coming, the guitar starts coming in. Here comes the twister. Exactly. There's water at the bottom of the ocean. Did you know that? This is not my beautiful house. It isn't? Oh, why are you... We're just squatting. Oh, for, for, for what, two years now? Yep. We'll talk about this later. Scenic white wallpapered uh, thing. All right, my number 22 is If You Tolerate This, Then Your Children Will Be Next by we'll be the next. Manic Street Preachers. We'll next, we'll be next, we'll be next, we'll be next. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, now it's a delay, I see. <laughs> we'll be next, we'll be next. We'll be next. It's one of those ones kind of like, uh, like Tournament of Hearts from earlier where it's just like, I can't help uh, but like want to like sing along to all of it. It's just this very grandiose yeah. vocal delivery. Like, and if you tolerate this, then your, your children, children will be next. Very well written, just like epic and symphonic almost. Some uh, nice, nice cutting lyrics. I yeah. Think, uh, We're definitely using the word epic too many times, Mia. Epic, 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 But you're epic, probably epic, going to need to use it again for that next one. So what's your number 21? It's Epic by Faith No More! <laughs> no, 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 it's not. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> okay. It's Red Barchetta by Rush, actually. <laughs> and, oh, what, what a nice professional scrawl out. Um, <laughs> so, yes, it is an epic. It is off Moving Pictures, which is by far their finest album. I think we oh, both yeah. agree on that. It's like basically a flawless album. And so this this song, you know, tells a very unique story of like, you know, somehow cars are outlawed or something. And they go, you know, Kate escapes to Uncle's farm to drive the car. He almost gets caught by these futuristic security guards, drives back, you know. It's a really stupid sounding like. But once you hear but it. Like the song itself is just like. 
Once amazing. you hear it, it makes all the sense in the world. That's the thing. Like, ding, 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 like the ding, guitar ding, just like perfectly ding. captures that like exhilaration. Yes. You know, you don't you don't really have to my only gripe, you don't actually have to talk about how the kid's feeling when you have the you know, what what is it like <laughs> mechanical music, you know. We can just bam. we can just say bam, that with bam. the guitar. Bam, bam. <laughs> Shut up, Getty Lee. No offense to Getty. Bam, 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 bam. They've like, got like a normal band riff. like a normal band's like five to ten like great riffs where it's all like put in that one that song. one song exactly all right and what's your mine is hallowed be thy name by iron maiden yeah that's almost made it i was thinking yeah. about it this is just kind of a huge like uh it's a <clears throat> prisoner uh you know sentenced to death kind of going through his like last thoughts from agony, like yeah. uh being upset about it accepting it kind of uh towards the like, end he's kind of kind of accepted it yeah, yeah it's like all well, everything down here is just an illusion anyway and it's just coupled with these like great riffs like bruce dickinson's mm -hmm. like super early with the always with bruce <laughs> it's got like a one of the few songs i i pretty often like skip like slow intros of things i'm never going to do that with Halloween. oh yeah with, that's, like, the that's a key thing it's like that's just kind of a funeral march in itself. It's not even at the funeral march. That nothing yeah. happens except he's in a cell, but it feels so it's just taking you from his mental state, yeah. And then just like some nice soloing and some nice like bridges and finally just ending with Bruce Dickinson like howling yeah. out Hallow be thy name. The original air raid siren. Yes. Alright, and that's number twenty one, so our just two batches left. We'll be back with the top 20 soon. I'm out here again.